We spent nearly a week in Kyoto, which is the country's seventh largest city with a population of over 1.4 million people. We notice that people who are content to rest as the escalator moves them to a different level will stand to the left, while those in a hurry will move up on the right hand side. The Kyoto station was opened in June 1963 and it's used by many railway companies. An average of 630,000 passengers depart from the station each day. It has been estimated that over 14 million commuters catch trains from Kyoto Station every year. Although Kyoto is a modern city, it hasn't lost its past and architecture from Japan's early history can still be seen. We took the subway to see one of these attractions. In 794, the emperor decided to make Kyoto the capital of Japan, and it kept that honour until 1868. In that year, the emperor ordered that the capital should be moved to Tokyo. The only way to see the palace is to join a tour group which for me made the visit a mad scramble, getting as much video and photos before the guide moved on to the next area. Over the centuries, the palace has burnt down repeatedly, and each time was built in a different part of town. The palace that is now on show was reconstructed in 1855. When the tour had finished, about an hour later, we were wet but more informed with early Japanese history. One of the first Yuguns of Japan also thought this city would be a good place to set up lodgings. So in 1603, he moved into the area and started to build Nijo Castle. His grandson completed building the castle 23 years later. Unfortunately, photography is not allowed inside the main building. Nijo Castle has all the trappings a warrior needs to keep safe from invaders. Separate interconnecting buildings with perhaps the first motion sensor security system in history, which came in the form of nightingale floors that squeak when stepped upon which made them the perfect alarm to warn of unwelcome intruders. All well-built castles need a moat, and looking at these walls, anybody trying to scale these defences would have had a pretty hard time. Outside of these defences, a traditional Japanese garden with a large pond and waterfall can be found. The shrine dates back before Kyoto became the capital city of Japan. At the shrine's entrance stands the Ramon Gate, which was donated in 1589. It is an important shrine dedicated to the Shinto god of rice. The day was hot and humid. Climbing the hills soon sapped our energy. The Turi Gates cover a network of trails which end with two dense parallel rows. From here we enter into the forest of the Sacred Mountain, which is part of the temple grounds. This small lake is populated with fish called koi, also known as carp. From the lake runs a small stream, which is home to tortoises. In those early days, timber buildings were all the rage, and with wood often comes fire. The original Toji Temple was destroyed by fire in 1486 and reconstructed again in the early Edo period. I believe it has the tallest pagoda in Japan.
To those who want to explore the variety of culinary delights that Kyoto is famous for, we will be most rewarded by taking a walk through Nishiki Market. The market has a history of several centuries. It started as a fish wholesale district, with the first shops opening around 1310. Later, a larger variety of shops moved in and the area changed into a retail market. The market is a long, narrow shopping street lined by more than 100 shops and restaurants. There are shops that give out samples, whilst others sell dishes that are meant to be eaten straight away. And they supply a couple of stalls in the corner of the shop for your convenience. Some families have operated the same stores for generations. The stores found throughout the market range in size from small stalls to large two-storey shops. Most specialise in a particular type of food and almost everything sold at the market is locally produced. In a narrow alley running just one block west of the Kamagara River can be found one of Kyoto's most atmospheric dining areas. It's called Pontacho. The street is packed with mid-priced and expensive restaurants, bars, karaoke, hostess clubs and geisha tea houses. In a subway passage near Pontecho, we entered the basement floor of a department store. The sound of the sales girls selling their department produce was intense. The attention to detail which the Japanese are famous for shows in their customer communications. There is nothing like a nice smile when purchasing an item. It is obvious that these ladies are very friendly. It is also known as the Pure Water Temple and was founded in 780. School kids in Japan have a hands-on policy when it comes to learning the country's history and culture. This means going on school excursions. We saw a lot of different school uniforms while taking in the sights. The steps that lead to the main hall was a popular spot to have your photo taken. The temple is best known for its wooden stage that juts out from the main hall. Both were built without the use of nails. The stage gives visitors a nice view of the city of Kyoto in the distance. I love the manual zoom on this girl's camera. I was approached by a number of school kids on an English assignment, inquiring about what country I came from and why we came to Japan. The Ottawa waterfall is located at the base of the main hall. Its waters are divided into three separate streams. Each stream is said to have a different benefit, longevity, success at school and a fortunate love life. The district can be found along the lower slopes of Kyoto's eastern mountains and has some of the city's best preserved historic buildings. The narrow lanes, wooden buildings and merchant shops give a good account of what the old capital city looked like.
down one of the side streets we observed a rickshaw operator drumming up more customers. At the end of the walk we noticed some more locals wearing traditional clothing. At the end of each day's sightseeing we nearly always finished up back at the main station. The building's design with its exposed beam roof, called the Matrix, is meant to represent both the structure of the station and the grid-like layer of Kyoto's streets. The station has 15 floors, offering other attractions and conveniences, including a hotel, art museum, theatre and many shopping and dining options. To me, the unique Japanese plastic food samples are works of art. You see them in many restaurant windows, showing off what is on the menu. This is only one of many Japanese style meals we had during our stay in the country. We were now coming to the end of our stay in Kyoto. Before we left, we went to see the light show on the steps of Kyoto Station. They held our attention for quite some time. <laughs>